All right, so as we're making our bench, um, I've told you to check out Paul Sellers' videos for uh, sharpening your chisels, because um, he does them all by hand. But many of us that do uh, fine woodworking, green woodworking, and even wood carving and such, we tend to, oops, we tend to uh, use power machines to sharpen our chisels. And I'm gonna say more so honing our, the shape of our edge. Um, what a lot of people don't realize, in, in things like timber framing, you may want a really flat grind to your chisels and such, but quite honestly, when you're doing different styles of woodworking, you'll find that having a camber on your cutting edge is much more effective than having a very flat grind. Now, these tools were my dad's. Um, they weren't well taken care of. They have rust on them and everything like that, which is pretty easy to clean off. <coughs> My dad was the same as a lot of people with these types of hardware store chisels. Um, he didn't use them very often, and when he did, he didn't sharpen them very often either. Um, me, on the other hand, every chisel I get cheap or um, you know high end, um, I take some time to camber the edges of my my blades. See if you can see that. Notice there's no hard corner on the top here, and I'll compare that one that is a similar size they're just exact same size this is my dad's and notice it still has the factory corners on it very sharp top edges and everything where mine has a smooth cambered edge I haven't really changed the profile of the cutting edge itself I've cambered it so it's a smoother transition and wood chips move move fluidly from there and this isn't a this is not hard to achieve at all um, the factory ground edge on hardware store chisels is pretty rough to say the least I use um, just because it's really easy to get a camber and I think I've talked about this in past videos the WorkSharp knife grinding attachment on the Ken Onion workshop sharp model I've used this thing a lot now you have to keep in mind on when you're using a knife grinding attachment on here you have to have this going at full speed or you'll burn it up um, you'll literally burn up the motor I've already burned one up because I thought that this ran at the same speed as the regular knife sharpening attachment and did not uh, that one runs at a medium speed where this one has to run at full speed because of the size and tension on the belt um, this is their fine belt, not the finest, but their white fine belt. And I actually put polishing compound, green polishing compound on this. Um, but it's a multi-belt system. And what I always start with is the heavy brown uh, belt, which is a 120 grit belt. You can get all the way to 80 grit on these. I, they probably have more than that. But the system is fairly easy to set up. This just attaches to here, this arm comes back, it's spring-loaded, and you push it down, and then you just web this belt through. Now I have noticed that sometimes the um, screw that's down here on the axle of the machine tends to come loose, so I tighten that down really good. Um, you, once you get it laced on there, you just turn this arm and it locks it into place, and when you hit the power on machine it'll it'll line it up for you now on the back side before you put it on the machine you see there's a little red tab down here and when you loosen this up it allows you to find the degree angle that you want for your edge now most chisels are going in at about 25 to 35 degrees I have mine set right at about 35 because I don't really use this um, angle guide all that much and I rarely use the back side of this unless I'm flattening a piece but this isn't the best machine for that basically I use this for cambering my edges on my plane blades and on my um, chisels now what you want to keep in mind is is these are abrasive like belts um, they will allow the tool to get hot 
but if you're careful, they won't get so hot that you're going to destroy the temper and the tool. I've talked about this before. It'd have to go over 400 degrees to ruin the temper and the tool. Um, you'd be hard pressed to blue your tools using this, these belts. So it's about fluid motions. Now, what I do is I'm going to walk through the steps here before I start the machine and show you how I do this. What I'm looking to do is I'm getting rid of these hard edges up here and I want a good camber, a curve on this right here, right down to the tip. I'm not really concerned with micro bevels. Um, I really don't care for them all that much. Um, I want a consistent curve from here all the way down through, a nice sweep, cambered sweep all the way down through. The back side, what I'm really looking to achieve is level here, just around here. I don't care about the rest of it, just around here, that's all that's important to me, okay? Um, which I've already basically achieved just using a hand stone real quick. It's hard to see in this light, but you see it's shinier up here, you can see my reflection, right? So I come back about a quarter of an inch on these smaller chisels and that's how far I go. Um, what you'll notice on um, chisels I've already done, sometimes you'll find if you see that shadow right in the middle of the bevel, that's a low spot in the chisel. And I can continue to grind and grind and grind and take that away and it'll take quite some time. As long as I have this camber and my edge is straight, that's what I'm really concerned with. This middle part here isn't bothering me so much. As I sharpen this over the years and hone this over the years, it'll, it'll work its way down. I just want to get most of it out. You'll notice around this one, around the top edge, see if I can get it in the light properly, you can see kind of a glow around the top edge. That's as far as I've taken level in the back. I know that that's level. I can go further back and get the machine marks out, which I'll do eventually. Um, I just want to do this video for you guys right now. So I'm going to start with this three quarter inch chisel because uh, it'll be fairly easy for you to see how I camber this. Right now it's very blocky. Once again, this was one of my dad's chisels. Um, he didn't actually really get much of a chance to use them. He bought them about a month before he died. Um, but I figured it was only fair that I, I clean them up and use them. And um, actually, this is going into my outdoor tool roll. Um, I take hardware store chisels a lot in my outdoor tool rolls. I do not take my three and six hundred dollar chisels and hundred dollar chisels out into the woods with me. Um, these are the ones I typically take with me, or I take cheap Harbor Freight chisels with me. Um, the chisels are fine on these. Uh, they need a lot of work. Most do when you first buy them, um, inexpensive ones. Um, but these fluted chisels, I these handles are garbage that the manufacturer puts on there from China or whatever. Uh, but what's nice is I can easily make new handles for this and I have a good steel blade on here. Um, so budget chisels, a little more higher dollar for these ones, probably about $35 for a set of four. Um, these ones, extremely cheap. Uh, but they still have pretty decent steel as long as it's straight and it can take a cutting edge I'm pretty happy with it. I don't care about the handles because like I said, I can always replace them. Okay um, But these are very easy for you guys to find uh, these ones are from Lowe's um, Cobalt and I found these at Home Depot just Dewalt chisels. I'm not sponsored by either um, It just happens that they sell them typically these in sets of three um, and if you want an eighth inch chisel or a quarter inch chisel, you have to buy that separately um, outside the kit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to round this off and you'll notice that I'm going to use mostly this part of the belt right here because it's very flexible right here. All right. And that's what allows me to get that camber without having to do much. And then when I'm refining the top and getting it polished and smooth, I come up here. Now I'm not going to follow WorkSharp's instructions for their knife sharpening where I'm going to sweep this on here five times, then change a belt, then change a belt. I'm going to get the shape of where, where I want it to be using this heavier grit, and then I'm going to work down through uh, three other grits on the belts to get the polish that I want. And that'll give me a super, super sharp edge on this chisel. Right now it's, um, it's about hardware store quality out of the box. Um, which is fine, but I can feel it's not a perfect perfect edge on there. I can feel a little roughness to it So let me see if I can zoom in a bit for you So you can at least see I'm gonna try to alter the angle here for you so you can at least see what I'm doing It's kind of hard with the lighting in here. I apologize for that, but I'm not a vi videographer There we go. That should do you 
So I'm gonna start the machine. Um, if you wanna turn your volume down now, it'd probably be a good idea. It's not very loud. Um, but if you wanna turn your volu volume down, feel free. And I'll show you how I do these sweeps. I'm just gonna work it until I get that edge shaped right the way I want it to. So I'm gonna put it up on full speed. There's a little dowel under the trigger. I'm gonna squeeze it and then there's a button to hold it in place so I can be hands free. You notice I'm coming in on an angle here. I'm not going straight in because this rest is kind of in my way. Now, if I wanted to, I could come up here and start to get that initial shape. And I'm starting on this, this part right here, and I'm sweeping forward like that. Generally, I'm looking for the sparks to come evenly across the edge of this blade. And as I get this initial sweep down, I'm going to check and see that I'm, I'm doing it evenly. Right now, I'm just knocking down these hard corners. I'm putting almost no pressure on, on the top, on this chisel when I'm doing this. I'm letting the belt do the work in the weight of the chisel itself. I'm also feeling for heat. I don't want these to get too hot. I'm sweeping back and forth with a sweeping motion like this on the belt. And that's just helping me knock those hard edges on the top of the chisel down. I'm not knocking the corners, the outside corners down, just these hard edges. And you start to see it starting to take shape and I got a flat right here I gotta get rid of. I'm gonna make sure I'm not blocking the camera for you. These are very light passes back and forth. I'm coming all the way up to the edge now, but I'm not spending too much time on the edge because I don't want it to get too hot up front. So I'm going from this corner back here and I'm sweeping like this on an angle across the belt. Putting a camber on your chisels and on your plane blades makes it so there's no hard gouging when you're cutting into wood and it allows the chips to move smoothly across your chisel. So you're not getting hung up at corners and getting yourself stuck down in the mortises and things. This is especially important with plain blades which you do pretty much the same way. And that keeps you from, when you're using a smoothing plane, from leaving hard tracks on your wood that you're later gonna have to sand out. Quite honestly, when I'm using a smoothing plane, likely I'm not even gonna do any sanding when I'm done. I'm doing a rocking motion, staying off the corners for too long. I don't wanna do them too long because I don't want to blue the edges of my corners. It'll destroy your soul. Now I'm just going to wipe it in a sweeping motion right up to the edge. And I'm nearly there. You can see the undulations when you're, it's hard to see on camera, but you'll see undulations in here where low spots are. That just means work on your high spots a little bit more really rapidly and then across the entire surface. You'll notice sometimes I'm sweeping 
back and forth like this as well. And that helps me get the perfect arc on top of my chisel. And then sweeping down from that top edge all the way down to the cutting edge. And at that point, I guess these chisels all have something in common. They all have this one little low spot right in the edge of the chisel. And I can work that longer and get that down. But my goal when I'm through, if you remember, I'm going to use a larger ch chisel just to demonstrate. If you remember when we started, we look, you can see the hard angle up here on top of the chisel right across here. And it's very pronounced. Let me get that back a little bit and try to focus for you. It's very pronounced, right? When there's a macro function on here somewhere, but I don't, I don't know how to use that yet <laughs> on this camera. Um, where on this chisel here, I've smoothed that out. I wish you could see that better in the camera here. Let me see if I can get it closer and get it to focus for you. Focus. Let me see. Focus. It won't do what I ask it to do. Anyway, so if I turn this sideways on the profile, you can see it's a very smooth, smooth sweep here. Okay? So it's a nice camber. All right? But it's not my final edge. Now, I did make sure that I kept my corners straight on the sides. My cutting edge is perfectly straight all the way across, and I can feel the beginnings of a burr on the bottom here which is great. So now what I'm gonna do is change to the next grade down, next grain belt, which is a lighter grain than this one. I'm actually beginning to lose some grain off this heavier grit belt, so it takes a little longer to get these chisels honed in. So um, as these belts wear, I think they actually work a little bit better. This is a smoother grain. Um, this is an X22 belt, and that's their number on the machine. This one's here is an X65, um, which is the next grade down from where I was at. So once again, I'm going to feed it through. Apologies for blocking the, the shot here. All right. It's a good idea every once in a while to give your machine a rest as well. Um, this isn't really a machine that's me meant to be running for an hour or anything like that. Um, I didn't run it for very long for maybe just a couple minutes here. Um, besides that, you would want to probably do, you know, a couple minutes on, a minute off, that kind of thing. Now I'm going to go on this belt the same way I did that one, but I'm going to spend less time on it. I'm going from that established, that established part here that I brought the edges down all the way to the tip in an even stroke. Nice and light. And that's just fine, just like that. So probably about 10 or 15 passes on the belt. Every once in a while, I'm going to make sure I'm removing any metal filings because you will begin to magnetize your tools. So just be wary of that. You want to remove metal filings and brush off your belts with a brush, like a bench brush. Um, just make sure there's no metal filings on that brush, on that belt. Keep them clean and they'll last you for a while. All right, now, so we're going to switch belts once again. So I used two different grits. Now I'm going to a finer grit. It's the next step down. Um, I continue to do this until I'm in shopping mode, basically. Um, luckily, the profiling part, like the brown belt that we used, the heavy grit, we're only going to use that when we first shape this thing. I typically won't use it anytime thereafter. So when I'm just basically honing this edge on a regular basis, um, for one, I'm going to do it often so I'm not um, removing too much material. Uh, number two, I'm gonna start with the, the heavier grit gray belt, then, next to, then the next grit, and then uh, my polishing belt. But I'm not typically gonna use the brown belt. So let's get here because I need to even out this edge a bit with some more polishing with a lighter grit. Make 
try to get off out of the shot. I'm going to try to zoom in a bit for you so you can see what I'm doing. Very light pressure on my fingertips. I'm not really putting any pressure on it. I'm just stabilizing the edge, keeping it in plane with the belt. And I'm going to bring it down here where it's a little more flexible. That's really giving me the polish I'm looking for. And I'm not going real heavy into the edge of this chisel. Just real light, sweep into the edge and off. Sweep into the edge and off. I'm getting a real flexible bar at this point. So now I'm going to go to my polishing belt. Typically this will be a white fine grain belt. I just, um, as they dull, I apply polishing compound to them. I'll show you exactly how I do that right now if you've never done it before. I'm just going to lock this into place, just like that. Get it centered. Start it and add polish, polishing compound. Now with this final bit, I'm looking for that burr to be folded over. And typically what I do is I'll turn it this way, because I have a flat, hard surface here. Start it up, and I'm just going to take the back edge to that very gently. Real quick, flat. Real flat, just quick touch, and let go. Sweeping motions down to the tip of the edge. The whole bevel. right where I need to be at that point. Typically what I'll do is grab a piece of wood and this is where now you're going to be mindful of your tools. So you drop these on the floor you're going to chip the edge. Um, so you want to be very careful with your tools. So basically I just want to know that it's cutting it's cutting across the entire edge of the bevel and I can get very controlled fine curls all the way across with no jagged edges, no tear out as I'm doing it. I should be able to use this like a fine carving knife. And I should get be able to get my surface that I'm chiseling down to nearly a smooth planed edge. So it's nice and smooth. So at this point here what I tell people a lot is um, just regular leather stropping. So I don't I don't have one sitting here right now, um, but typically I would take a leather strop and I'd glue one side rough face up on this side of the wood, and then I glue another side rough face up on this side of the root, 
what one side I would charge with white or green polishing compound one side I would not put anything on it at all and all I would do is starting from the back so let me see if I can get close enough so you can see so I'm on that that corner that I took off right and I'm just gonna sweep and sweep and sweep about 20 or 30 times on the edge that has polishing compound I've even stropped on wood as long as it's smooth um, stropping on the edge that has polishing compound and it'll turn black and you'll see the metal coming off because this is a, a micro grain you know abrasive and yeah I've stropped on wood plenty of times it, it doesn't hurt it if anything it actually helps remove any final bevel that's on there and get that nice polish on there and then what I would do on the leather towards me pulling pull the burr just pull the burr and I'm making sure I'm pulling the burr right off that edge and that's beautifully sharp and then if it you know I had a clean piece of leather on this side without stropping compound I wipe my chisel off get any compound off of it and do the same thing over here 20 or 30 times um, it takes longer for me to explain it to you than it does to actually do it without the explanation you're probably going to spend about maybe three to five minutes per chisel when you're first profiling them it may take you a little bit longer take your time if you're not uh, confident in your ability to only put light pressure on it keep um, some water nearby that way you can um, keep your tools cool and make sure you wipe them off and oil your tools regularly to keep them from rusting something my dad never really did too much but uh, something I've always lived by um, if you feel any more bevel on there quite honestly when you start to use your tool um, that'll come off especially if you're using it in this capacity like this um, real quick it'll it'll just after you've used it a couple strokes you'll feel it's not there anymore um, so what I tell people to do is after you've reprofiled and after you've sharpened and everything and honed check your edge bevel down see if you can get light light cuts all the way across you're doing it in a kind of a slicing motion across the wood in this capacity I want to get curls kind of like that yeah and then flip it over flat side down bevel up and make sure I can get a nice sweep all the way across that edge and this is really going to help us with fine chisel control but also when we're chopping like mortise and tenon joints straight down this cambered bevel on here will allow us to push the wood away from the beveled edge of the chisel so away from our knife wall so literally it just pushes the fibers away and makes clean out when you get down into a, a mortise joint a lot easier and it gives us a nice crisp strike and if you're doing quite a few mortises and quite a few cleaning pieces cleaning out especially on something as large as this workbench we've been doing um, just be sure to hone your edge regularly and polish it right um, sharpening is not something we do very often we're mostly honing and that's like the work sharp uh, knife grinder attachment I'm mostly I'm using my dollar belts on there things that I've used many many times already after I've already after the profiling's done with the cambered edge uh, the cambered bevel um, basically I save doll belts just for honing just for the purpose of honing I don't need to remove a lot of material from these things um, but I want to make sure that I can carve very hard wood just uh, this oak is a sweeping grain it's very hard and I can come across here just like I would with pine and carve this and I want to make sure that this bevel when I'm going bevel side down like this I want to make sure that I know that that bevel is moving waist away and it's keeping the straight line edge of my chisel right where it needs to be and reducing any kind of I mean these aren't very hard strikes at all on this oak and I'm really getting a nice deep cut with that it's nice and clean it's deep I've gone about 
a little over a sixteenth of an inch, almost an eighth of an inch deep on that cut, um, and a V groove cut because of that cambered bevel. So it really, really makes work working with chisels a lot easier and beautiful. And without these hard lines here, without hard corners up on top here, you don't get stuck in the mortise. Okay, the, that bevel will push the waste away. And you'll find that even hardware store chisels like these are a joy to use. Um, even if you don't like these big rubber handles, which I don't, I don't mind them really, but they're such a joy to use when you get them to this, to this point here. So give it a shot. Um, you might say, well, I don't have a work sharp. Well, use sandpaper on a piece of wood and you'll, you'll be doing this for a while until you get it down to where you want it. Um, the work sharp to me was a good investment. You're looking at, um, with the knife sharpening attachment, the knife grinding attachment, not just a, I don't use the knife sharpener at all on that thing. I don't like it. Um, the knife grinding attachment is well worth the money. You're probably looking at about $150, $200 for both things. Um, it's the Ken Onion version. That's what will take that knife grinding attachment. You can get the flat disc work sharp that has a disc on the top. It has like the kind of these glass discs with, with abrasives on it. That'll work just the same really. You just take your time. Um, but I've found over the years that cambering the, the bevels on my chisels and plane has made any chisel that I pick up such a beautiful joy to work with. Um, it's relaxing to me after, after it's done that. It's frustrating, especially department store chisels or hardware store chisels. It can be extremely frustrating um, until you've put this nice camber on them. And after that, you, besides the handles, you won't be able to differentiate between a nice fine woodworking chisel and a, and a hardware store chisel in the way they cut, not the way they look, but the way they cut. Um, they're a bit shorter than good quality chisels, but um, give it a shot and um, I'm sure you're gonna like it and you'd use that same process on your smoothing plane blades and even on your jack plane blades um, there's nothing wrong with putting a camber on your your plane irons the blade that get, that's what the blade that goes in your plane is um, you learn through trial and error and don't come down on this tip too hard we're not trying to make a micro bevel on this tip we're making a consistent bevel all the way to the end here and then we remove the burr gently and you can remove the burr simply by pulling it across the leather strop. After that it's just about honing and maintaining your tools, keeping them oiled so they don't rust and you'll have them for a lifetime. You'll be passing them, you'll have great grandchildren in the future that you may never even meet that will still have your tools if you take care of them and teach your children to do the same. Alright, take care.